Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have one of the most brilliant uh, guests that we have on the program. We're talking about so many topics dealing with earth changes. Stan Deo, you can go to his website, standeo.com, and you have lots of remarkable links. You have solid science on space weather, astrophysics, earth changes. Um, let's kind of cover all, all these different topics. And uh, uh, Stan, right now we have uh, sinkholes that are developing all over the world. You're one of the primary... Uh, scientists that promotes the idea of the Earth expansion. Uh, we have uh, Earth changes occurring where the geomagnetosphere and the southern Atlantic anomaly is over 3 million square miles and hasn't yet come to the surface of the oceans or the land, which would be very devastating. Uh, we've got uh, <clears throat> approaching objects in our inner solar system that are being covered up by the globalists that are having uh, geomagnetic effects as well as plasma effects on things like the stars and planets. Uh, Coming comets next year, October 3rd, is going to be a near pass by Mars with a giant tail actually going to be covering Mars. It'll be 15 times brighter than the moon. We have 2012 DA14, 197 meter wide asteroid or comet that's going to pass by the Earth at less than 5,000 miles, and they've shut down the data acts available from the military and the Navy. What they did for you where you were probably the most accurate predictor of uh, volcanics and earthquake activity anywhere based on your model, which is a plasma piezoelectric model of earthquake fault lines, uh, probably one of the most bright models for predicting what earthquakes are in terms of the energetics. <clears throat> and, of course, they shut down the data on that as well a few years ago. Yep. So let's just pick up whatever topic you want and let's run with it and uh, see where that takes us. Well, as you said, there's so much going on. Uh, one of the things Holly, I've been really watching this morning on the news, and for the last several weeks actually, but uh, is the uh, sinkhole in um, sinkholes in Louisiana, and there are other sinkholes in you know Florida and around uh, in Arizona. These things are all you know semi close to uh, coastal regions, but I do think, as you said, that the increasing number of them is something that is due to the Earth's expansion, um, plus the ro water erosion underneath. Let's face that. I mean that that goes on, but the water erosion probably would not have created a sinkhole. Uh, unless something had put pressure or released pressure over the, the lid covering the hole that was being chewed out by the water flows, whether they were natural or man-made. This one, this big one in, uh, um, in Louisiana, is a worry in that it's got liquid petroleum gas down there, uh, enough that if it were released in an explosive burst and caught fire, it would release the energy of like 100 Hiroshima bombs. It's a pretty nasty amount of energy. Um, we got a, 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 an email and a video of um, the, um, I think it was Home Depot in Florida, with a huge number of electric generators all covered in black plastic getting ready to ship out to New Orleans. Why is that? You know, somebody knows something we don't, and they're getting ready to supply emergency power to residents in the area. Um, for Home Depot to do that, I don't think it would be an individual or like a store down in New Orleans say, let's send me some more. I think that many of them covered up and ready to go would be something that FEMA or some uh, federal group has requested in advance of what's about to happen there or what they think may happen. Exactly. Uh, look, I know that for years, decades, uh, that companies like Texas Instruments buried uh, toxic chemical waste and there were other companies that buried radiation waste in sinkholes and salt zones before they were sinkholes in Louisiana. Uh, I even contributed to part of that uh, when I had some beryllium oxide in the lab I was doing research with years ago in Dallas and took it to Texas Instruments. And, uh, you know, I'd been careful with it in the lab and used gloves and stuff and a breather mask, but apparently this is one of the ten most toxic poisons uh, that on the list that the United States had at that time. And um, they met me with guys that looked like they were in moon suits, you know, hazardous waste suits with oxygen breathers and stuff. And I was just there in the parking lot getting my plastic uh, garbage can out to, to give to them so they could take this over to the Louisiana area there and put it down one of those deep wells so that it didn't right. bother anybody. Well, now I'm just one of a lot of people and companies that, that contributed to, you know, toxins that they buried down there. Should that erupt, even in gas bursts that don't catch fire, uh, or should it bubble up, this is going to potentially release toxins of unknown mixes up into the atmosphere in Louisiana. Right, and that'll spread. Uh, it'll probably t prevailing winds bring it to eastward, 
And yep. then, of course, I head toward the Atlantic Ocean and head toward uh, Africa and Europe. Um, yeah. We're dealing with multiple catastrophes. We have the plan literally for uh, after the election for a preemptive nuclear attack on the Bashir reactor. We've got Fukushima that's not settled. We've got the magma chamber of the uh, Fuji volcano ready to blow, which does every Boy, 100 or 200 it. years. And we have, of course, a number of reactors sitting in fault lines directly between the Sendai uh, fault line zone and the subduction zone off of Japan at, in Mount Fuji. <coughs> so Earthquake Central, which is Japan, has had a 500% increase uh, in earthquakes. Your model of the Earth in terms of how it changes over billions of years is probably the most accurate one I've seen in terms of what's going to happen to the planet. Where, where is this going? Because there's something speeding up here in terms of Earth changes that's going to really hit some, I call, extinction or pre-extinction level events. Well, I don't know that we'll be extinct over but certainly a lot of people it, will it'll, die. It'll, it'll, it'll leave a mark, let's put it that way. Even if yeah. it doesn't extinct us, it, it's going to, some of us will wish we were extinct, let's put it that way. Absolutely. I mean, any number of these super volcano uh, situations could release enough uh, dust, debris, ash, water vapor into the atmosphere at once to create a nuclear winter for a year or two in high altitude circulating, you know, so that it blocks out the sunlight. If that happens, people are going to be going hungry because crops won't grow without sun. And what crops are grown hydroponically or otherwise will be so precious that you wouldn't be able to afford them anyway unless you were part of the elite uh, in your your country or your, your culture. Right. These these things. Um, I mean, I'm looking at uh, Yellowstone today as well. And if you want to see the plot of the earthquakes I did from 2000 to 2012 today, um, I, I put it in the images uh, page, which if you go to our uh, website standao.com, scroll down to where you see the big microphone on the left and where we're talking uh, to you today. There will be a show images link, and you go to that, and it will take you to um, uh, another page where I have a number of talking points and, and graphics, but you'll want to go down about oh, halfway on the left and you see key fault lines. And if you click on that and then go down to the bottom of that where it says Yellowstone Quakes, you're going to see what I pulled off Google Earth today uh, with the USGS plot of earthquakes that were both shallow and deep. And these are like for the last 12 years. What we see in the yellow there is what's happened like several hundred of these minor earthquakes say under 2.5 in the last few days on the western side of Yellowstone Lake, right at the edge at the state border there uh, of Wyoming. Now, all by itself, this might be okay. That's just a little bit of uh, surface uh, or subsurface fracturing 35 to 70 kilometers deep. But look at the one above that up near the, the corner of where that uh, regional green mark is that the government puts in there. You'll see a whole cluster there in the northwest corner of the caldera. That's the one we've been watching for some time because those quakes are shallow. And um, although those are like you know, a couple years old, those plots, that tells us that there's a new vent opening out to the northwest toward the, you can see the lake up in the upper left hand there into the neighboring state. We, uh, we may be seeing something come out of Yellowstone, whether it be a massive uh, magma outpouring rather than an explosive volcanic eruption. Uh, I'm not sure which it would be, if at all, but... These earthquakes do worry me, and there's certainly now, a prevailing wind pattern that could bother a lot of America's breadbasket. Now, if it blew, which it blew 550,000 years ago, the, the, the debris cloud altered the climate for the planet, but it also created a debris field as far south as uh, some areas of Southern California, Arizona, etc. Where does the, the prevailing winds carry it if there was a major, you would call it ash cloud that was released from uh, Yellowstone? It really depends on the wet, the weather of the day. The jet stream, uh, which is not being stable at the moment, I might add, the jet stream could go where it doesn't normally go and blow it backwards or down toward uh, the south or too far to the north. These are things we'll have to wait for on the day. It's just hard to predict. Wow. Back in a moment with more with Stan Dale. Again, the website is standale.com. And do get Holly Dale's book, Dare to Prepare, the latest edition, back in a moment. Yeah. Welcome back. And uh, while well, we're talking to you about this, uh, there's a number of things that are likely to happen, and we're not going to put time dates on them, but uh, there's 
We talked last week with uh, Professor uh, Jim McCanny, which basically his science perfectly integrates with your theories as well of a expanding world, almost like a glass blower's world model, where the glass blower spinning, you have giant voids in the earth, and uh, you have abiotic oil. You've got caverns. You've got all kinds of geological changes, which indicate that the continents are, were time uh, approximate each other at a much smaller Earth, probably about thirty percent smaller than the current size of the planet. Um, lots of um, remarkable things are speeding up, so there's discontinuous and rapid changes. Can you give us some ideas about how this works now? Because we're dealing with magnetic uh, changes, like there's apparently a south pole anomaly near Iceland. There's a North Pole anomaly in the South Atlantic, and there's a the South Atlantic anomaly. We've got earthquakes everywhere from Santiago, Chile, to Sendai, Japan. <clears throat> We've volcanic mountains blowing off in Iran. Uh, we have all kinds of events happening that are telling us, just like the Bible, that things are really, really speeding up. And uh, we have crop failures that are not just due to climate shift. I think we've already had some UV shock of our crops, but nobody's monitoring it properly or reporting it. Um, can you give us some ideas of how fast these events are going to happen and what kinds of events people should expect to happen? Well, as you were saying, Bill, there's already problems with the sun and the, and the UV emissions and new frequencies. Um, I've talked with you before, back oh, several years back, about the 1992 discovery of two new ultraviolet spectral bandwidths that were being emitted from the sun. Oh, really? These are brand new bands that are well, were 90, not present before? That's wow. right, in 1992. and. I'm sure there are more since then, but um, those bands uh, uh, were not uh, cancer-producing, they said, But and I talked to the, the uh, solar physicists involved with this, but they said that their concern was that phytoplankton and microbial life forms in the ocean were absorbing those particular bandwidths and multiplying, and by multiplying, increasing the heat in the ocean, which was part of the uh, global warming. Um, the, you know, this the South Atlantic anomaly is really a worry. It's a precursor to what would happen if the magnetic field of the Earth were to get to almost zero, and it's approaching that. You know, it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And at some point, it may just flip-flop upside down so that north becomes south and south becomes north. And I think if it's going to do it any time in the next decade, it will do it in the next year or two because... The, the sun itself flip-flops its magnetic field every 11 years, and every 22 years it's back to normal. Now, when it flips, it changes the vectors on the solar wind, you know, the directions and, and strength of the particles coming in the solar wind to hit the Earth. If our field, a magnetic field on Earth, is weak enough at the time that it, this next inversion occurs, it may encourage our, our core to flip-flop in the planet and make our magnetic field go backwards. Now, if that, you know, you know, go upside down, if that happens, I'm pretty sure that we will lose most of our shielding in the upper atmosphere from the sun's radiation and from deep space galactic, uh, you know, gamma ray emissions and things like that, because we have natural shields in the ionosphere and uh, in the Van Allen belt. The South Atlantic anomaly underneath it, if you were to go down there and park yourself underneath it without, you know, clothing and, and eye shielding stuff, you'd be pretty, very uncomfortable. We don't even allow our satellites, you know, or with, with humans on board our space stations and craft, to go through that area. You, you avoid it because the radiation is so intense there. Yeah, now, it's, yeah, it's, it'll fry the electronics of our satellites, is what you're saying. Well, it'll do the, the and people too. Well. That's right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, cook them. Years, what four or five years ago, up in uh, uh, near Central America, but on the east uh, uh, East Bay area there of uh, South America, there were a couple of islands that got hit by a widening rim of the South Atlantic anomaly, which is in the South Atlantic, but the, the rim widened out, and without even being directly underneath that, school children and adults that were out in the sun uh, that uh, day or two were feeling pinpricks to their skin, were getting nausea, and, disor and were disoriented from their exposure to what was coming through that hole in the upper atmosphere. I've seen it uh, and felt it myself when the ozone layer opened up a hole over Perth in Australia, and uh -huh. I was there. And, and the, the uh, radio announcers and TV guys came, uh, came out and started warning housewives, wear sunglasses and eye protection, in other words, if you're going to be hanging out your whites on the line to dry because the blue-white ultraviolet penetration may hurt your eyes. And I remember that it, it, one day I was driving down the freeway there when this was happening, and I, even with my sunglasses on, my eyes were crying from the hurt from the light of the sun. 
Yeah. And my, my, my skin underneath my jeans felt like somebody was stabbing me with needles because it was coming in through the car window. So wow. these things are minor compared to what's going to happen as our magnetic field starts to shift. And yeah, while, in fact, uh, it'll be really dangerous to be outside at all. And uh, what will happen is you'll see a day-night reversal where basically all travel and activity occurs at night. And people will be sleeping indoors, hopefully in buildings that are protected from the level of radiation. Because some of these radiations can actually penetrate buildings. Um, you know, there's four classes of ultraviolet light, A, B, C, and D, I guess is the best way to describe them. A, tangent, B, will burn, C, causes cancer, and D, death. These are very high-energy ultraviolet light that penetrates uh, even through paper and, and other materials. And then, of course, we have the higher-energy gamma rays and background microwaves that are in the radiation and the, and the, and the solar wind that's very powerful. And without that magnetosphere, we're literally uh, living inside a microwave. Well, we're shielded. You know, it's like uh, Star Trek. We've got our shields up, but the shields are weakening. And um, the captains, uh, we don't have any single captain, but the captains of our planet are all saying, you know, shields up somehow, shields up. Um, you know, when we were talking about the earthquake stuff a while ago, I, I don't know whether I, I mentioned it to you this, uh, to, this uh, to you before when we were offline, but right. there, you were asking about uh, Washington State and the, you know, the geological safety of it, etc. Right, we talk about various areas that might be safe because you can look at your maps and it gives you an idea where to think about might might be safe. Uh, we mentioned central uh, Washington State in the area called Wenatchee, which is central Apollo country, we call it. All right, well, what you have to look at is uh, on that uh, show images page of, of, on my website I was telling you about. Um, at the very top row, mm. there's something called a lineament. L I N E A M. -E yes, we looked at that last time. The, uh, okay. Would that be under the Earth Changes area under Standeo at the top of the page, or how would I find that? That would be key fault lines uh, on my show images page. Okay, uh, the show images page, I'm trying to find that. Uh, yeah, where the microphone is on the main page. Um, the microphone's the right. on the uh, it's on the right hand side, right? It's on the left hand side. Just scroll oh, yeah, down here to the left hand side. I see it is, yeah. And over to the I right here. The, anywhere it says show images, click on that. Ah, okay, show images, yeah, all right. Okay. Now, I just want to to reinforce what I was telling you about. This lineament, this Montana-Florida fracture line, goes right through the New Madrid area as well. And I don't know whether I addressed that when we were talking about it last time. We, we talked a little bit about it, and I wanted to expand on that, because this is an area that we only got, got into a little bit last time. Let's analyze it more, because... These lines are all connected. We know that the Macondo drill site at BP is connected to the uh, sinkholes, and the sinkhole area fault lines are connected over to the Madrid fault system as well. Yeah, and with all the bubbles and stuff coming up, I'm wondering if there's not massive um, under mantle or, you know, just under the surface type activity going all through the, the Gulf Coast region there. And we are going to see some massive shifts in the plates. Uh, or, or the plate boundaries there, and also the uh, Imagine Fall. It has a lot of dikes in it, you know, frozen magma dikes. Wow. These uh, pictures are pretty uh, shocking, I guess would be the best term. Revealing. Back in a moment with Dan Dale. back and um, yes Stan a lot of people are asking questions they want to know when these things are happening I tell them things are happening in multiple different ways and waves for example the magnetic fields dropping in the South Atlantic anomaly we've got thinning I think already of the ozone layer and as you mentioned I didn't know this about the two frequencies but I know from the contacts I've had that the ultraviolet light is definitely shifting toward more dangerous frequencies the frequencies that could cause crop failure. We know that ultraviolet light C uh, class can actually cause immune suppression. That's why it can sting the skin like you're hit by an elastic. Uh, it can also cause blindness. It can cause a thing called pterygian, which are these little lesions that grow across the white portion of your eye across the pupil. Pterygian are caused by high energy ultraviolet light. Uh, the skin cancer rates even in young people are going through the ceiling because the ultraviolet light is not the same as it was when we were children 20, 30, 40 years ago. 
So um, do we have that? Of course, we have the earthquakes that are sitting where 75% of the earthquake of the reactors in America and worldwide are sitting within strike zone of an earthquake fault line zone. Uh, and all of the reactors are sitting near what's called extreme weather zones where extreme weather could knock out station back out power. We're really heading toward a, a series of cataclysms, not just one or two, that will proceed over a period of years, including they're going to result in crop failure and famine, uh, population shifts, uh, very high likelihood of volcanic eruptions of causing increased cooling rather than warming, uh, therefore moving us into at least an ice age, and that's going to cause massive population shifts. So uh, what do you see happening and over what period of time? What are the likely first things to happen and what is what's likely to proceed afterward without setting dates or times? You know, probably the first thing I see is not geophysics or astrophysics. It is an election or a lack of it or an election in turmoil. Yeah, it's election you're talking about. Like the, with the, yeah, talk about that because I'd like you to give an opinion because we have the second debate tonight. We and uh, we, we absolutely can't have another term of Obama, although uh, Romney has some warts and some things that concern me about him. Uh, his, one of his best buddies is a CFR member. He's been, uh, uh, how can I say it, a, a darling of the globalists himself. He probably could manage the country better, and he's definitely pro-life at the moment, although he wasn't for a while, which is really anomalous for Mormons because usually they're pretty conservative. Uh, right. But he's definitely pro-life, and that's what their campaign has come out now. Uh, I know that if we don't vote for Romney, we're going to get stuck with Obama, which will destroy America. There's no doubt that, that Obama should have a, a hat with a wrecking ball on it as a symbol of what he wants to do to the United States. Uh, it's obvious that Romney has more brains than Obama. If he doesn't have his wee-wee teleprompter, he can't speak. And uh, Romney actually would probably try to run America as a business in a better way and give more credit to the people of the country that actually built the country on the backbone of innovation and hard work. Well, you know, Bill, look, uh, if we get to an election and actually hold it, that's one if. We could yes. see um, the elections called or delayed by Obama due to actions overseas in the Middle East. You know, in Very likely. Or, yeah, that's very possible because right now this situation in Syria is way out of control, and uh, they're basically on the edge of declaring a regional war there. And I've heard that last week a Russian general died with special forces down there in the Syrian conflict with the British and American SAS special troops actually fighting Russians in a proxy war in Syria that's actually happening right now. Well, right now, the United States has 2,000 uh, troops they've just put into a three-week joint war game with Israel at Ashdod. Now, uh, why are they doing this now? You know, a war game, it's not really sending troops to the region for war, you understand, but we're right. having 2,000 troops in a, a war game. I mean, you know, that tells you right there that something is ramping up right now. That, and they, this is the first part scenario. Do we have an election? I mean, will it, will it actually get to that point? If it does, does it matter which side wins, you know, Obama or, or Romney? Well, I personally would vote for, for Romney because it's the, it buys us time to get you know, things organized as far as preparing for what's going to come one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. Where, whereas Obama doesn't give us any time at all. It's totalitarianism almost right away. His second term will be a communist term resembling Vladimir Lenin. Well, you know, the sad thing about communist revolutions is they go into a country, in our case, it would be into us, and they plant their subversive agents as normal people throughout the community and into the infrastructure. So that when you have a, a revolution, it takes a revolution for the communists to really take over. When you have a revolution, it doesn't matter which side wins, the, the communists will have somebody in the leadership, and they will use them to set up the new communist-backed and organized regime. So it doesn't right. matter which side, you know, wins the election. I suspect that there will be events triggered which will make the American public rise up and say, down with the White House, down with the government. And this will this will happen. Even the Hopi have told us that they, they said that the... Um, the United States will fall by internal revolution on multi fronts, you know, multi faceted revolution, yeah. uh, civil war. Uh, we've got a prophecy that we just got in from someone saying the same thing. He had a dream vision about it. In fact, we've had a number of them. Mm -hmm. This is what is facing us. This is the most clear and present danger that I can, you know, Yeah, even more on. so than Planet X or, or the ultraviolet light and the other things, which are going to cause famine and disruption and would change a lot of the, uh, the way people live. But yes, we're facing an economic uh, fiscal cliff. $500 billion is going to be taken out of the budget. 
we're facing um, almost certainly a dramatic rise in prices of food. This QE3, I think, is the final play to lay the groundwork for a totalitarian financial new system, which will be a biometric world currency the Bible calls the mark of the beast, which is biometric money. That's coming. You know, and it's coming very quickly. It is coming quickly, and certainly that that economic collapse will contribute to what happens if we have a revolution here or civil war. Because during that time, the shipments of food by truck and rail will be horribly interrupted. There won't be the normal delivery you had at Walmart or at Safeway or wherever you shop. Those areas are going to be interrupted by people, um, groups taking over food shipments, you know, of piracy, robbery, and shooting people during this happens. So it doesn't matter whether the weather kills our food or not. We're not going to get the food distributed as it should be. I mean, we have seen right. such an increase in people buying freeze-dried food and uh, dehydrates. I mean, we've got a link up on our site to one of our friends' place. Yeah. Uh, people are just going crazy at the moment because they realize it's not going to be a stable end of year no matter what. No, no, no. Right. Even if you, let's put it there, the scenario is, let's say we just look at the commodities market. If you just look at things like Nightly Business Report on DirecTV, they're saying already the price of meat is going to double next year. The price of corn, which is a good stable to find out what's going on, and of course the policies of Obama continue to have corn for gas a haul when there's no need for it at all. We have lots of natural gas, lots of clearing, burying coal, other technologies, and they suppress other alternative energy technologies that would be far more uh, useful. In fact, I talked yesterday to an engineer on what's called V3 solar, which is a new spinning solar technology that's 20 times more efficient. And also, I, I can t contact a company called Zenith Solar in Israel. These are like 20, 30 times more efficient than current technology. All of these alternative energies, the government doesn't want to have fast track, and they usually invest in what I call older technologies that are black holes to convince people it really isn't a good idea now to do this. And now, at the same time, they're cutting down coal, shutting down coal mines. So it's... The management at the top is actually just trying to destroy the country. I see that. I, I, for example, rather than, yeah, I don't see Obamacare doing anything good. I don't see opening up oil fields and proper what we call non-chemical hydrofracking in safe areas that won't destroy water tables. We have Obama shutting down oil exploration offshore, but allowing the Chinese 60 miles off the, the Florida coast to explore for oil and deep drilling. It's everything is backwards. You know, Bill, you can see why it is. We have to be very careful about what happens next because they're driving us, they're herding us like sheep into a revolution yeah. which gives them right to martial law and using UN troops to quiet us down and that kind of stuff. Well, they're already, we have a 500-page manual that's coming from John Moore that's been obtained. They've already trained on weapons attacks tactics Canadian and Mexican and foreign troops to be able to control American cities, towns, and banks. In the event of coming martial law, which you know is very probable if there's an economic uh, downturn, of course, they'll make it to their best advantage, like uh, Manuel, Rahm Emanuel said, never waste a good disaster. Uh, they'll use it for maximum advantage to bring about a full biometric martial law police state. Well, Holly's been very busy putting up lots of amazing news items and stories here. And just to, if you go to the, the main page there and you look at all the videos, you've, you guys do a lot of good hard work here to get the information out. Um, well, Holly does. Uh, she yeah, she's doing a lot of work on this. This is really good. Now, the, the timeline that I see, and I'm just putting these out, not in specific dates, but I want to get your feedback. We have these near-Earth objects coming by, which can affect us in a plasma way, causing discharges, as Dr. McCanny said last week. We have uh, increasing ultraviolet light causing crop failure and climate shift, which means too wet, too dry. In other words, changeable climates that stun crops. <clears throat> we have a major crop failure around the world, not just in our hemisphere, but in the southern hemisphere, too, <clears throat> which means food prices are going to go up by minimum 30%. I think be somewhere between 30 and 100% increase, which is 30% to 100%, which is doubling the price next year. Um, I think that the QE3 and the fiscal cliff are probably going to, if Obama gets in, we're going to hit the fiscal cliff because the Republicans aren't going to agree. If they come in under Romney, we're probably going to get a trade war with China and currency wars because of QE3. Um, 
Added to that, I think that there's a very high probability next year there's going to be a CME that will knock out the power grid somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere. And we're going to start having some major degradation of our power distribution networks, which they haven't hardened. They should have done that. What are the things you see in the timeline in the next few years, uh, Stan, that may well put us in a position where our civilization is crumbling? Let's put it that way. Well, when you hit upon it, the the economy, the the solar business, the um, uh, earthquakes, the the changes in weather. I mean, we're seeing uh, this week there's uh, going to be forecasted winds uh, in the Montana, uh, Wyoming, Wisconsin, or sorry, Montana, Wyoming area, which will be near hurricane force winds. And those winds, um, you know, I I call them land canes, and, and Holly's put that in there. Yeah, uh, I like that term. Yeah, you invented, in fact, I think invented it, where these land caners, or some of them are a thousand miles inland, which has never ever seen before. I know, and they persist. Now, they don't have to actually be circular like a, a hurricane. Uh, they usually will have a straight front, and uh, technically they're called a derecho, but, uh, you know, it is a hurricane over land, but going in, in like a straight front. And those things, if they're augmented by problems in the, the Gulf Stream, or sorry, the jet stream, which we're seeing, the jet stream can dip down to the surface if it becomes very unstable and can just act like a sharp knife and cut trees off at the ground level like a scythe has hit them, and that's called a microburst. And this has happened before, but not likely to happen as badly as it's going to. It could be a clear blue sky, and this can happen. You'd have no warning. I mean, you know, that's just one of, of several you know major things that we can look at. But um, yeah, the, the, I, look, we tell people right now, it's never too late to start preparing, but one of the things that you must prepare immediately is spare water and spare food because they are, uh, you know, water is going to become very valuable, and food, as you've already pointed out, is going to at least double in the next year, and it's, it's maybe even more than that, and certain types of food will be totally mm-hmm. unavailable. And people could never go wrong if they put away food of the kind that they normally eat, you know, not like just rice and beans and stuff, because that's not the, the yeah. American diet. But yeah, things I, that you can and eat. everybody should have a greenhouse uh, or the ability to build one, because they should be prepared, even if they have a farm, that it may not be the kind of climate outside that can actually grow food, because of the light pattern may be so dangerous. Normal crops just will get stunted and won't grow. You know, I think the ones that will win in that, and this is kind of a joke, though, will be the marijuana growers because they've got all their indoor lights and stuff hidden away so they can grow stuff. But uh, they'll have to ship some marijuana to, to eatable foods because it'll be more profitable. Yeah, isn't that funny? It is funny. But it's uh, just... very, very possible. Now, you mentioned some interesting news items that Holly's put up about the election. And the Obama supporters have actually threatened to actually start rioting if Romney wins. They've even threatened that they will kill Romney if he wins the election. This is really uh, an election where America is more split than any other time in history, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, you, you got it. And, you know, uh, in addition to just the normal political causes of this, I'm wondering if the, the, the mm. I keep coming back to the sun, that there are certain types of ultraviolet radiation the French have studied uh, and found out in the uh, late 60s and early 70s that can cause people to become very uh, irritable. Uh, divorce yes. rates increase, more susceptible to viral attacks of whatever, from the emissions from the sun weakening our immune system. Uh, that gets right. back to you know, your side on health and things, but all these yeah. things can affect the behavior of people, and we're going to turn into a multifaceted lynch mob here, no matter who wins the election, if there is an election. Uh, there's just no way out of yeah, it. Yeah, I call it the selection. Yeah, trouble next year, I tell people that the first thing that happens, and they should understand, they won't let the economy completely collapse. Prices of foods will go up, but their whole goal is we want to gradually eliminate or quickly eliminate the middle class to make them an underclass. They will, the, the global elite, including Obama, want to have a situation where they can have martial law, uh, electronic surveillance, and then they'll bring it back off just a little bit, just like people get used to the idea of TSA. I'm not used to it. I always assault them when I go there and say, look, uh, I'm not going through that uh, radiation scanner, and it's dangerous. And they said, oh, no, we've been told it's safe. I said, you're not talking to a, a moron here. I said, I'm an environmental doctor. And I say it real loud so everybody in, in the airport area for probably about 400 yards can hear me. I said, these are dangers, and they induce cancer and DNA breaks. I said, I'm an environmental expert. You're not doing that. I said, get your senior people over here. I don't care if you do a pat down and do it properly, because if you don't do it properly, I said, I'll be giving you your, I'll be Mirandizing you on how you'll be sued. Uh, and I say that right in the airport, and, and they're like, oh my gosh. So I remember when I went to the airport, LA is usually pretty good. San Diego is awful. 
the airport of San Diego, the TSA people there think they're being trained for the Nazi SS. It's crazy. So wow. the Los Angeles airport is very professional. Well, all this stuff just kind of underlines the thing that we've been talking about, that we're being herded into mm. civil disorder on a massive scale. Every, everybody's considered a terrorist. Everybody that asks questions is a terrorist. Anybody that has a blog about any of these issues, including end times issues, anybody that, according to Patriot Act 1, that has more than two weeks of food is a hoarder. And according to Patriot Act, you can be sentenced for a one-year sentence. And by the way, with a one-year sentence, you can be sent off to a civil detention camp, just like the NDAA, the executive order. It's already in Patriot Act. With no habeas corpus, you can be imprisoned permanently without any charges. Yes, and our bank deposits, as you're saying, are not uh, you know, likely to be there. One day somebody will wake up and, and, and the government will have said, oh, we're shutting the banks down for a bank holiday and, and your money's gone. I mean, you know, you can only put so much in a tin can out in the backyard, and after that it's going to be things that you need rather than the money. Because the money exactly, is yeah. worth yeah. paper. And, and it's good to have some silver and gold coins, but if you, I tell people have we have two service companies. We've got PrepareWise, which we'll be talking about shortly in hour two. We have the Ready Store has other equipment. We tell people you got to get ready for this because this is not like maybe it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We just don't know the exact dates, and it could come in different waves. We might have a bank holiday next year for five to ten days, which most people say, oh, that's no problem. Most people don't have more than three days of food. If you don't have any water because they shut off the water, and I work with FEMA, so I know back in the 90s, the first thing they'll do is they're going to shut off the power. I said, you're kidding. The FEMA guy told me, <clears throat> senior FEMA for the region, told me, I said, oh, yeah, if we have any disaster, including a so-called dirty bomb, terrorist activity, anything, the first thing we do is grab the power switch and actually pull and turn off the grid. The Why? first thing they're going to do. Why? Because they want to have total containment. They don't want people to be able to get gas up and drive away. They want to have shut off the freeways. They want to shut off everything. And and I said, that's really counterproductive. I also confronted the director of FEMA at Adams Park Hotel, March 16th, 19, uh, 2001, in downtown Denver. <clears throat> he was up at the lectern. And I said, I've read your classified manual. I said, and if we had at the Republic Plaza... A, um, a dirty bomb or a micro, you know, small nuke go off or a biological weapon, your first thing to set up a perimeter and to anybody trying to escape the perimeter is to shoot, to kill, and put them in a body bag. It's not to decontaminate. It's not to transport them to a hospital or a facility. It's to shoot, to kill in the center of mass and put them in a body bag. You know, and, this might uh, explain, uh, <clears throat> I think I mentioned it last time, but uh, we've seen uh, miles, you know, like six miles of fencing put up along the freeway between here and uh, Colorado Springs, you know, between Pueblo and Colorado Springs. And we've seen right. it uh, west of, uh, I think it's west of uh, Oklahoma City, the uh, reports of it. It's like they're right. going to be able to block off the road when you're trying to get in or out of town, and then they'll right. herd you off into rail cars. You know, you're just trapped. It's a six-mile-long graveyard of cars and people. <clears throat> Gunderson Steel, I had people when I spoke in 1999 at Prophecy Club in, uh, in Portland, Oregon, the uh, Gunderson Steel was making those rail cars back then, and they're made not only in the United States, they're made in Canada and in other countries. Those human carrying rail cars are real. I've actually seen the photos of them. They're not imaginary, they're not a conspiracy theory, it's a conspiracy fact. Right. It'd be interesting yeah. to know if the rail lines run up close to all these blocked off or fenced off sides of all these roads. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So people need to know we're not kind of tin-hatted, um, you know, fools. We're keeping our eyes open, and the very least you need to have is three weeks of food and water, self-protection, and you need to know your neighbor, and you need to be prepared to help them as well as yourself, and open dialogue. Even if you get a little bit of spittle on you, that's okay. Just, uh, you know, as I say, wear your big boy pants and and, uh, and wake up that the world is changing and you need to listen to the Most High God, get yourself right uh, with your neighbor and start preparing for some very nasty times coming to America and the world. Thank you, Stan Dale. We'll have you back on Thank soon. You. Hour two coming up in just a moment. Hour three, Jonathan Gray. Don't want to miss it.